guys, this is Base Brawler, and I'm going over my... How do I say it? I am going over my max level limit to give you guys this video. Now, if you don't know what that means, basically what I've been doing is I've been leveling up characters to a certain point. Once they reach that point, I'll level up another. And once they all get to that level, then I use my crystals to level up the character that goes in the order that I go in. Because so I go in a specific order. I go Mirror, Mista, Rayon, Suno, and so on. So, anyway, we, in this video, or I in this video, I'm going to be talking about Mirror's backstory. Oh, boy. I bet this one's going to get a lot more views than Mista's. Um, personally, I think that I, th um, I thought, like, I thought out Mirror's story a lot better and more so than Mist does. Because when you guys think about where Mir is at in the current story, as opposed to where he started out, it's pretty insane. So his story starts out with Rice and Ricettes, kind of, in a way. That makes sense. He starts out the same way they do. They were sent from a pod in a different universe to go to a universe where that Earth is, in, is not inhabited, where that earth can be inhabited by Princess Mi Princess Ricette and Prince Mirror, because he was the rightful heir to the throne. However, of course you guys know that does not work out. Works out a little differently. Here's what happens to Mirror. So, with Rice, as we contrast this, with Rice, he followed a certain animal, and that animal led him to Tenji, who from there on raised him. Mirror went with a wolf and that wolf raised him. Kind of like uh, the story of Jungle Book. He was raised by wolves. However, he wasn't able to talk to the wolves or anything like that. He just kind of communicated like, you know, just like gestures and stuff like that. And he learned to basically be like a caveman. He learned how to do fire and all that because he had key within him. Therefore, it was easier for him to do tasks like that because of how powerful he was. So, one day these villagers find him. And he's a savage beast, pretty much. He's like, like he's making dog sounds. He's like, ruff, ruff, ruff. like he's like a dog, kind of. Or more like a wolf. So he's like... Mmm. Like that's Mirror when he's like a three-year-old little baby. Little toddler. He's going... Mmm. <laughs> he's growling at people. It's so adorable. So they're like, oh my gosh, this is such a cute little baby. What is he doing? And so the villagers just take him in because they want to raise him while his family's away. Because they get into contact with other people and no one knows where he came from. He's just a baby, a strong baby, because they say a lot in the village that he's strong. They like try touching him and poking him, and he's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> like, he's just a cute little baby that everyone loves and falls in love with, even though Mirror hates it. He's like, "You guys are freaking dumb. You guys are low class beings. Why am I hanging out with a bunch of low class villagers?" Because he inherited his royal blood. Now his father was a nice king of the sages. But, he also didn't really like hanging out with lower class people. Not because he hated them, but because he thought that he would be judged by the villagers. Like, why the hell is there a king freaking rolling around here? He doesn't like us, and he was afraid of being judged by them. That's why the king wouldn't hang out with the villagers. But other than that, um, King Mirror loved... Not King Mirror, he has a different name. Uh, Mirror's father loved... I keep thinking of Vegeta, <laughs> that's why. Uh, King Mirror loved... King. I keep saying King Mirror, stop. His father loved his people, everyone. Even Rice and Ricette's parents. Which, Rice's parents are Alatrus and his wife, and yeah. So then, they raise him. They teach him how to speak. These villagers teach him how to do stuff that he didn't know how to do before. For six months. Until one day, a bear attacks. 
a bear attacks his village. Every everyone is screaming and running around. They don't have guns because guns were banned in that village. So the only one who could stop him really is Mirror. But he's a baby. He's a three year old. He's not just gonna go up to the bear and go, "Hey, get out of here!" or I'll shoot a key blast at you. No, he's a baby. He's not gonna fight right away. So he sees the people that are raising him being attacked. And even though Mira is kind of a douchebag, like when it comes to verbally interacting with people, he still cares about people like his father did. Because again, he's his father's son. So these villagers are being attacked. His parents are being attacked. And so what does he do? He gets mad. He's like, what am I going to do without them? What are they going to do without me? They're helpless. So he gets mad, and with his rage, he attacks the bear and he kills it with one punch to the throat. He kills a freaking bear with a punch. None of the other villagers can do that. So they run away from this little boy who's capable of that. And so Mir tries following them, but they don't like him. They're afraid of him. So they start shooting at him. This little boy. And yes, he is really strong, because he's the son of a super-powered warrior. A superhuman, basically. However, he's still a baby. So, eventually, they shoot enough rounds into him to damage him. And he passes out with a gunshot to the chest. Yes, a little baby has a freaking bullet in him. And not for scientific reasons. However, he still recovers and lives on. And so he goes back to the forest where he was raised by wolves. And he continues doing stuff. However, he's able to talk and speak. So he starts saying sentences like, Oh, I gotta get this fire going. And he basically talks to himself. Um, a couple years pass, and these monks find him. What do they find him doing? This freaking savage little kid. They find him building a house out of stone. And not like Minecraft, where he's using a pickaxe to freaking mine it. He's, like, punching the stone, and, like, using his hands to, like, mold certain bricks and stuff. And he's making a house. Like a little hut for himself. These monks are impressed, to say the least. So what do they do? They go up to this little boy and they're like, Hey, what you doing? Like, are you having fun here? And he can't speak well English, so he's like, He's like me? <laughs> he's basically, Mir's basically like me when he's like that age. He's like 13. <laughs> so he's like, um, yeah, okay. I'll... We'll see what you guys have to offer. And basically, Mira at this point doesn't really have a goal in life. He just wants to live. Because living is fun. I mean, he gets to do whatever he wants. Or so he thinks. But anyway, so these villagers take him and they start raising him. There's this one, not villager, monk. These monks take him to this temple. So this one monk... The elder monk goes up to Mirror and he goes, What's your name? Mirror's like, Name? What's a name? And so the monk explains that it's basically like a label. And Mirror doesn't know what a label is either. He's like, What's a label? <laughs> like, what does that mean? So, um, the elder monk goes up to Mirror and he goes, Look at that over there. He points to a tree. He says, What would you call that? And Mira goes, a tree. That's a tree. And then so he explains to Mira that whatever people call you by is what you are. And so Mira's kind of confused. He's like, well, wait. If people don't know what I am, how can they just call me something? And that's what I am. He says, no, silly. I mean, like, like I said, the label. Like, what should I address you as? 
Vader doesn't know what that means either, but he's like, okay, I kind of get what you mean. Like, specifically, with all these humans, I wouldn't just call you a human, I'd call you, like, you know, father or master. <laughs> but he still doesn't get that concept too well. So he points to a mirror and he goes, What is that? And the elder monk goes, That's a mirror. And Mir says, Then call me Mir. That's how he got his name. Mirror. Yes, it's Mirror's Auto in the game, but in the first one, it's Mirror, so yeah. <laughs> anyway, so Mirror starts training with this monk. They start educating him, teaching him how to speak better, how to get better at all that stuff. Basically giving him an update on life in the world. And Mirror's pretty damn smart. He catches up in a few years. Five years. So Mirror is 18 now. And the monk's main enemy in Power Level Warrior 1 are the Mystic Clan. <laughs> Guess who takes Mirror from the monks in a raid? the mystic clan so they take mirror and they basically force him to train under their wing however it wasn't very easy for them to capture mirror because mirror was strong in fact all of their warriors except for the top three died because of mirror they still of course had people back at their you know stronghold but the people they took died. 20 people died. So, they decide to train him anyway because of how strong he is. He could be a great asset to our cause. <laughs> Mir does not like being with them at all throughout the whole time of him being there. Because he's sort of given the mist treatment. Where there's these strong guys, or not strong guys, there's these guys that are treated with more respect and more... Um, basically they're given whatever they want, but Mir has to, you know, strive to get to that position, even though he can't really, per se, do it. Like, it's not possible, because he won't ever make their expectations, because they hate him. <laughs> and so Mir, for a while, just is contracted to defeat monks. And over and over again, he's successful. But at some point, they notice Rice. Rice is a very powerful warrior, and so is Rice Set. However, Rice Set just wants to win the tournaments. And so she does that. What does Rice want to do? Rice wants to win the tournament to heal his father, Tenji. And Tenji has a very well connection with the monks. And so he could possibly be a key role in protecting the monks, defending them. Rice. So it's like a win-win. If Tenji's... If Rice's father, stepfather, Tenji isn't saved, that means the monks won't be saved. And at the same time, Rice won't have any incentive to get stronger. Because he won't be that much stronger than Mirror. But if Mirror loses, then all that will happen. Because the Mystics are afraid of that, they threaten Mirror his life. If he doesn't capture Rice, he will die. So, Rice enters the tournament, and he defeats Rice. That's all they wanted, pretty much, is for Rice to lose. So then Mirror loses to a really powerful monk... And then Ryset wins the tournament, of course. But then the year after that, Rice enters again, and he wins the tournament. And Mirror wants to protect Rice, because the Mystic Clan... Clan? I keep saying clan, like this is Call of Duty. The Mystics realize that Mirror doesn't like working with them. So they were rumored that they were going to kill Mirror anyway. So Mirror became a nomad after that. He just decided living on his own and do what he did best as a child. Just not live with wolves, so to speak. 
so to speak, but um, live without a family or acquaintances. Just live on his own. <laughs> so he didn't really care. He didn't enter the tournament after that. He just wanted to find information and try to find a way to leave his past behind. That past being a past full of killing and murdering innocent people for practically no reason. However, the mystics do have a deeper meaning for killing the monks. They know that the monks can foresee things. And they know that the monks' predictions have been wrong before. And they've been hearing rumors before their slaughter of the monks that the monks had a feeling that the world was going to come to an end, an apocalypse would happen. And they did not want the monks to go insane and use their powers to destroy the world. Because they have artifacts and ways to do that. So the mystics decide to hunt them down. Mirror, on the other hand, doesn't care about all that. He just wants everyone to live happily. So him killing innocents doesn't really make him seem like he wants people to live happily. So he stops doing that. And so, basically, the mystics try every way to find Mirror and stop him. Basically kill him. Because they know that he's gone rogue and he's a very powerful warrior. So that's why Mirror decides to team up with Rice, because he knows that they hate Rice, and they know that Rice is also a strong warrior. Due to the fact that he feels that Rice also is a sage. And the way Mirror finds out about the crystals is through rumors and theories that warriors all across the galaxy, the three galaxies is what it's called, which consists of Earth, Xersha, and another planet, Amarsha. Those three planets are basically the three galaxies when it comes to, like, life and stuff. So they hear about the crystals, and Mira finds out about this, so he starts searching for them. And then that, of course, leads into Power Level Warrior 1, which I've already made a manga off of. And you guys can read that story from there. But anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to be doing Rice Set next. I think I already did Rice. I already explained his backstory. But when it comes to these characters, like I haven't done yet, I am going to explain Rice Sets. Rice Sets is also very interesting, especially when it comes to the plans I have for her story-wise. Because by the end of the final Power Level Warrior, Rice Set... And a few other characters are going to be very important when it comes to the story. But anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys in the next one whenever that may be. Goodbye.